Hey guys, and welcome back to King Kraken Sports. Mike here, and today we're talking about defensive linemen in the 2017 draft class. Now, last year, of course, the defensive line class was loaded. There were a lot of guys uh, that carried a first-round grade or a top-50 grade for me that guys over top-50 grades ended up going in the third, fourth round. This year, not so much, but there is still a ton of talent to be found. So let's take a deep dive into this. So today we're just going to go through the top five. Number one is Jonathan Allen out of the University of Alabama. Uh, Jonathan Allen could have come out last year and probably been a late first, early second round pick. Decided to go back for his senior year. I am so glad he did. He became a dominant force. Uh, I think his signature play that everyone remembers this year is when he actually did the Superman dive over the defender, uh, I believe against Texas A&M, to make the sack. Uh, he's gotten bigger, he's gotten stronger, and he's gotten faster. Uh, last year he was, uh, about 270, 273. Um, it kind of moved okay, but definitely wouldn't have, uh, would have been probably too slow to be an edge rusher and too small to be a defensive end. This year he comes back, he's 295 pounds, he's, uh, definitely, uh, an interior defensive lineman, and he's gotten a lot better in terms of rough, rushing the passer as well. Uh, so right now, uh, Allen carries the number two ranking on my big board and is definitely a top five lock for me. Next up is Caleb Brantley out of the University of Florida. Uh, Brantley, um, production-wise, you're not going to see a lot of sacks. You may not see a ton of tackles for loss, depending on what you like. But as far as just being all around the football, I mean, he is tenacious. He gets after it on every play. Rarely see him taking plays off, uh, which is another reason why he is great as a first-round player for me. Uh, he's right now, as of today, rated as my, if I can find him, 24th-ranked player on the, uh, on the big board. So he's carrying a late first, early second-round grade. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if he went higher than, than rated. Next up is Montrevious Adams out of Auburn. Uh, Adams at the beginning of the year carried a very low grade for me. Uh, watching his his previous year's tape, he really uh, wasn't really committed all that much. Uh, you could tell on a lot of plays that he wasn't giving his full effort. Uh, he was kind of hit and miss. He was basically what Malik, Dow Malik McDowell was on tape this year in that He'd stand out for a couple of plays, and then you wouldn't be able to find him on the field for a couple of day, for a couple of games because he just didn't make any notable plays. Adams, however, midway through the season this year, had a big change uh, as Carl Lawson, uh, the edge rusher from Auburn, got going. He, he was able to free up more room for Montrevious Adams to kind of roam the middle and just completely uh, just eat up space in the interior offensive line. Adams right now is rated as my 26th overall player, so kind of like Brantley, late first, early second. I think he's probably going to be taken in around that range. Next up for me is number four. Sorry, is Chris Wormley out of Michigan? Uh, Wormley played kind of a hybrid role. He played defensive end, defensive tackle, kind of like that Michael Bennett for the Seahawks um, uh, position. And while I'm not saying he's Michael Bennett, I'm saying that he does carry a lot of versatility with him, uh, and he can do a lot more going forward uh, than maybe he could have been at Michigan. Michigan ran kind of a hybrid scheme. Once he actually finds a scheme where he fits in properly, he's going to do good things at the next level. Um, I think he's he's a lot faster uh, against guards than he would be against tackles. Uh, so he's a very he's he'd be an undersized. Uh, defensive tackle that can win with speed and can also get up underneath you and drive you back into your quarterback. Uh, good against the run. Again, versatile. Checks all the boxes. He's rated as a top 50 player for me, I believe in around that 40 to 45 range. Definitely think that that's in around the range that he's going to be going in. And last but not least is Lowo Lutelele. If that name sounds familiar, it should. He's the younger brother of Star Lotelele, who was a star at Utah as well. No pun intended. Um, Lowell 
has had first round discussions this year. I don't quite see it, but I do see uh, he's a very strong player at the point of attack. Uh, very good snap anticipation, and he's really good, just like his brother was in college, at eating up space in the, uh, in the interior and clogging lanes for running backs that, you know, uh, to get through. He's uh, a tremendous asset against the run. Might need a little bit of work on his pass uh, rush, but uh, that all depends on where he ends up going. I have a top 50 grade on him as well. And again, that's in a round where I think that he should end up going. Other guys that didn't quite make the list, uh, obviously a lot of you are going to probably comment and ask where Malik McDowell is. McDowell shows flashes for plays at a time, and then is nowhere to be seen for a couple of games. He also spends a lot of time out of position a defensive tackle shouldn't be, and that's on your back on the grass. Uh, he gets kind of beat a lot with power, and I'm not really sure if he's fast enough to win with speed. Uh, I have him kind of as a late second round uh, pick. Uh, who else would would people be looking at? Uh, Jaleel Johnson out of Iowa is a guy that I really like. Um, again, I think he's 6'2", 308, uh, really strong at the point of attack, not really an asset whatsoever in the you know as far as a pass rush but an excellent run stopper run stopper run stopper there you go so that's going to do it for today um as always like comment subscribe join the discussion tell a friend tell that friend to tell a friend and uh, until next time guys talk to you later